Let's talk about motherboards. What's the difference between the really cheap motherboards and then like the $700 plus motherboards? When should you get those? Is there a reason for them? So let's talk about maybe five things and five reasons why you would get something like that and why most people may just be okay with a typical regular motherboard. Let's get started. <laughs> Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Thank you for joining me for another video. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe, leave a comment below. What type of motherboard person are you? Low end, middle, or the high end? All right, so we all get excited when we see those really crazy expensive motherboards. Back in the day, maybe something like the Asus Rampage line, like the Rampage 6 on X299. Um, and now, you know, we have a lot of motherboards that we also used to have back then, like the X570 MSI Godlike motherboard. There there's, you know, the formula as you get a little bit down and there's just some crazy expensive motherboards over a thousand dollars that have like integrated water cooling, like maybe the ASRock motherboards. So what's the reason to get something like this aside just to have the coolest and best thing? Um, let's talk about maybe five reasons why you would get something like that. And then also, you know, I'll talk about some reasons why most people are just fine with a typical run of the mill, not too crazy expensive gaming motherboard. So the first reason that somebody may get one of these much more expensive motherboards, that's not necessarily just for gaming, but if they're doing some type of content creation, there are a couple of features that these motherboards usually come with that can actually be very, very useful for somebody who's producing content. First of all, a lot of times they're going to take a lot more NVMe drives. Um, these have become pretty important in like a fast workflow. So some motherboards like the MSI Godlike, even though it's $700 plus, it does come with a lot of slots on the motherboard for NVMEs. You also get like a little add-in card. So that's extremely useful having these type of features on the motherboard like this, not to mention like a 10 gigabit networking. Basically, instead of having like a one gigabit networking where you would connect to your you know your internet or something like that in your home network 10 gigabit allows you to connect to other computers at in your home maybe even a nas that's 10 gigabit compatible that's going to give you much faster transfer speeds let's say if you're saving like footage or video files or very heavy files to move around 10 gigabit is going to let you move really big files around very quickly to like a nas or something like that so that's definitely one of the primary and big advantages to having one of these really expensive motherboards. Now, if you don't have any particular need for like four NVMe PCIe drives, and if you don't really need something like 10 gigabit networking, um, that's a good reason to sort of avoid these really expensive motherboards. You'll be just fine with most motherboards that have maybe just Ethernet or maybe a Wi-Fi. Uh, most standard motherboards will let you do probably two NVMe drives. For most gamers, that's gonna be more than enough. Maybe a main one for your, you know, your boot drive, a second one if you wanna have games on that or just have fast access and of course you could always add as many other typical SSD or hard drives as you want to your system but these type of features are definitely something that are going to add to the price of an expensive motherboard like this a second reason why some of these motherboards are going to be more expensive is going to purely come down to the performance a lot of them are going to be geared towards overclocking like the extreme motherboards apex even like the godlike motherboard basically it means that the components that are used in these motherboards are going to be able to resist a lot higher CPU uh, overclock as well as heat and different temperatures. They're going to often have much better VRMs. They're going to be able to handle all that heat a lot better. Sometimes they'll even have a lot of little tools on them, overclocking specific, like maybe, um, you know, a, a restart button or a power button on the motherboard itself, or sometimes even like a dual BIOS. So you're going to get a lot of features that specifically cater to the crowd that really wants to tinker and overclock their system. Um, that's going to be primarily something that's going to add to a lot of these more expensive motherboards. Now, now, if you're not really planning to overclock too much, maybe just a little bit, you don't need all of these crazy features and these buttons on the motherboard, you'll be more than fine with a mainstream motherboard. And in the process, you're going to literally save hundreds of dollars as well. A third reason often these more expensive motherboards exist and why some people buy them, aesthetically, they just look better. A lot of them have like a back plate on the back. They have much nicer components. In general, they may have a lot more RGB than cheaper motherboards, even if cheaper motherboards nowadays all have RGB on the much more expensive motherboard you're gonna see a lot more higher quality and more intricate RGB lighting for example on the Asus Rampage 6 you have like RGB lighting throughout the entire motherboard it looks absolutely awesome even on the Asus formula 
motherboard like when it's off you still get that rgb lighting which is really cool typically a cheaper motherboard just isn't going to give you that much of an aesthetic look in terms of the rgb it may have very basic type of rgb the fourth thing that often makes these motherboards just more expensive it's going to come down to the accessories that they offer for example uh, x570 motherboard comes with a pcie um, little card that you can put nvme um, drives in them to give you a lot more drives and some of these motherboards may also have really cool little accessories like asus has the dim.2 slot basically it's going to be right next to your ram and you can install an mvme drive right on that little dim.2 slot that almost looks like a ram stick that way let's say you have a water cooled build you don't have to take apart your water cooled gpu to get at that back plate of your motherboard often that's where the nvme drives are located you can basically just sort of take out that little slot that's almost like a ram slot easily upgrade or change around your nvme over time without as much hassle so you're definitely paying for that convenience and that's something that i first saw on the x299 rampage 6 which back in the day was really expensive it was like a 650 to 700 dollar motherboard now all the mainstream motherboards that are high end are really as expensive as that if not more like the x570 godlike and the asus extreme and the one from gigabyte they're all over 700 dollars now but expense aside that's some of the extra little features that you're going to get with these motherboards if it's worth it to you or not then it's up to you but if you don't necessarily need these little knickknacks that come with these more expensive motherboards you'll be more than fine with a nice mainstream motherboard usually these are really really extra a lot of times that i've gotten them in these motherboards i end up not even using them um, but if you know you're going to need a specific one it can definitely make all the difference so sometimes you weigh these costs and it can actually be worth it instead of having to buy an accessory like a, a 10 gigabit network card separately might as well get a motherboard that has it already and that price difference then starts to make a little bit of sense if you need these sort of components that are expensive to get anyway and lastly when you get a high-end motherboard that's very expensive often you're going to be sort of on the bleeding edge of technology you're going to get a lot newer features um, you're going to get these really niche little things included with the motherboard like we mentioned before that can be both good and bad it's good because you get to try out these different things and motherboard designs that eventually gets passed down to the mid-range and lower end motherboards but it's also bad because a lot of times you you don't get as fast support um, as something like a mainstream motherboard economically for example let's say if asus is selling their strix motherboard a lot more people are going to buy something like that rather than something like maybe the extreme motherboard which is just a lot more expensive so they still have to develop and test all the little features that are just on the you know extreme motherboard or whatever high end motherboard you may be looking at they still got to sort of test those and develop those but they're going to have a lot less of a return on their investment because less people are going to buy them because of the price so naturally they have to jack that price up a little little bit whereas on something like a mainstream motherboard they have a lot more volume to work around with that also means that these motherboards typically do get better and faster like bios updates and if there are little issues or bugs that come out often they get found out faster that makes sense because not as many people will have a really expensive motherboard so some of these issues may get put sort of on the back burner even if you paid a premium for it it's possible not too many people have reported the problem so it may not really come on their radar of whatever motherboard manufacturer there is so just keep that in mind while you are paying a premium for the features build quality um, and performance of an expensive motherboard doesn't necessarily mean you're paying for the level of support that something like that would entail just because it's easy for stuff to fall through the cracks like, like little bugs and glitches on the motherboard that may just take a lot longer than a mainstream motherboard to get found out and then you know resolve properly all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video let me know down below what type of motherboard you typically buy like a mid-range high-end or maybe a cheaper motherboard remember to subscribe if you like my content, smash that like button, check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you guys on the next video.